Hey guys, in this video, I have the LDK portable handheld. It has a 2.6 inch LCD that runs open dingus out of the box. It's very similar to the RS97 that I reviewed before and is a competitor to the new BitBoy, which also runs open dingus. The LDK comes in several colors, yellow, black, white, and translucent. Being an open dingus system, it has many emulators available like NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, TurboGrafx, Game Boy, CPS, Neo Geo, and even PlayStation 1. So now I'm going to quickly unbox this thing first. Here you can see that I have the yellow version of it. I really like the color yellow and most of my gadgets I like getting it in yellow. So in terms of cables you have your typical uh, RCA video out cables right there as well as a micro USB cable to charge the uh, removable battery that is in the LDK portable. So here's the LDK next to the new BitBoy or the BitBoy 2. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, thicker, but it's slightly shorter. The screen on it is slightly bigger than the BitBoy 2, which I like. And overall, I think I'm more comfortable with holding it because it is slightly wider. The button layout is also slightly different. It's more like the Super Nintendo with the X, Y, and B, A. I'll turn on the screen for the BitBoy 2 just to show you how it compares with the LDK. I think the LDK screen is a little bit brighter, but it could be the fact that I might have turned down the brightness a little bit. But I think they're really comparable, but uh, it is the BitBoy 2 is a smaller screen. So uh, the LDK may be a better option for you if you, it's, uh, if you have a hard time viewing the BitBoy 2. So like all the other Dinga systems, you scroll through the tabs using the L and R button at the top of the LDK. And the first section you'll see is for like uh, tools. And then you have a section for emulators. From here, you'll find uh, most of the most uh, popular emulators from uh, for Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation, etc. So there's quite a few of them on hitting uh, the... Uh, right trigger button will bring you to some of these uh, games here. I don't really touch any of them but and uh, you can load other games obviously if you download them but a lot of these are like uh, public domain games. Um, I'm more interested in the emulators and I'm sure you are as well. And the next section here you'll have again some more emulators and these are like the Atari emulators and more classic ones. And the next section we have is uh, the settings and skins. And let's take a look at the settings. From here, you can change the date and uh, various other settings that you'll find in an open dig dingus system. Um, and then over in the next section is uh, skins. Um, so there are a few already installed and I'm just going to select one here. And of course, like all the other in open dingus systems, it runs G menu and X. And this is the build at the time of this video. So let's take a look at the button layout. As you can see, it's more like a Super Nintendo button layout compared to the uh, BitBoy 2 or the new BitBoy here. So they are obviously different. And uh, I prefer the um, LDK button layout but you may prefer the uh, BitBoy one and let's take a look at the uh, buttons here um, obviously you got a bigger d-pad I quite like the d-pad here because it is a, a little bit more substantial and on the side here you can see the uh, SD card slot and these are uh, various other buttons to control the brightness compared to the BitBoy to change the brightness I believe you had to hold the select button down and then hit A and B um, on the left, on the top here, you see the triggers, uh, L and R, and um, you also see the charging port, micro USB charging port, as well as the uh, this uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack used for video out. And on this side, you have the um, on and off button, and there is the volume dial. So next thing I want to show you is the actual battery. So opening this compartment, you will reveal a removable battery, which is really nice. It's the BL5C, and this is used by Nokia phones, and a lot of portable devices will also use this type of battery. And the great thing about this is that you can also replace it. You can have a couple of spares, have them charged, and bring along with you, and uh, that's also very nice. So overall, I do like the feel of this handheld. I think it looks really cool. Um, and it looks very much like a um, like a shrunken down Game Boy, like 
but with a bigger screen. I'm just going to run through some demos here. So this is the Genesis emulator and I'm going to play Animaniacs just to give you an idea of what it's like. Uh, in terms of the emulation for Genesis, it's pretty good. Um, where it's really kind of slowing down is like maybe some Super Nintendo games and, and the PlayStation 1 games. It's a little bit hard to play this game through the um, screen on my camera, so there's like a little bit of lag. But anyways, we'll go to the next emulator and uh, see what that's like. So this is uh, F-Zero Maximum Velocity for the Game Boy Advance. Overall, I think for Game Boy Advance games, it's actually pretty good in terms of the emulation. And as you will see, um, I don't really notice any slowdown or anything like that. It runs pretty good. Next, this is Super Mario World for the uh, Super Nintendo using the emulator. And uh, this frame rates are pretty good. You see it dropping below 60 a little bit every once in a while, but overall pretty decent. And I uh, use this quite a bit to play Super Mario World. The next emulator I want to show is Final Burn Alpha and I'm going to play Giga Wing, one of my favorite CPS2 uh, games. And the load times are going to be a little bit longer because it is decompressing the, the ROM files but uh, as you can see it loads it just fine. Hit the select button to insert some coins like the arcade machine and then hit start. This is uh, Iridian 3D on the Game Boy Advance. It works pretty well. It's one of the games I play quite a bit and uh, it looks pretty good. Here is uh, Ultra Beast, and uh, it's for the Sega Genesis, of course a very good classic. And I play this quite a bit on uh, my retro systems, and it works pretty well. This is Mega Man 2 for the Nintendo, the NES, and I like this game quite a bit, and it's one of my favorite Mega Man games, and this is the one I usually play quite a bit uh, when I was a kid. So this is Aero Blasters for the TurboGrafx-16, one of my favorite games on that system. And uh, the emulation for that is pretty spot on.
This is Einhander for the PlayStation 1. This is probably one of my favorite PS1 games and uh, it doesn't run great on the system and it's quite apparent because there's a little bit of slowdown and I'd say it's not playable because I don't think the processor on this uh, portable can handle PlayStation 1 games very well but it does seem a little bit slower and uh, there's significant slowdown on this unfortunately. I really like the LDK. It's a good size, not too big, not too small. Since it runs Open Dingus, it has a lot of apps and emulators already available for it. You have the ability to load your own ROMs and save states. With so many handheld portables out now that run Open Dingus, like the new BitBoy 2, the RS97, it can be a difficult choice and it really boils down to the form factor. If you want the smallest possible portable, I think the BitBoy 2 is the one to get. If, however, you like the landscape format, the uh, RS97 is uh, good as well. The LDK sits somewhere in the middle and I do like it. Uh, the BitBoy 2 was a bit too small for my liking, so it's kind of a toss-up for me. I do like the LDK design and button layout. The D-pad is bigger and it feels nice. I think with the options out now, you can't go wrong with any of them. So if you're looking for a, um, a portable retro handheld and uh, you're a fan and a collector, I'd suggest you pick up the LDK since it is a must-have for any collection. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it uh, and I will see you next time.